Hi guys, welcome back to another video from Real Therapy Fishing. On today's episode, we're going to be making a two hook flapper rig. So the components that you'll need to make this two hook flapper rig are some 2-0 hooks. Uh, it can, but obviously I, I prefer a barb. You can do barbed, barbless, whatever you want. So some 2-0 hooks. But I quite like a long shanked uh, hook. Especially if I'm using worm, you can easily slide the worm up there. So next we've got some oval beads. Now it's personal preference, but I do prefer using a oval bead rather than a round bead. Uh, I feel like it gives your um, rig a bit more of a streamlined look rather than just a circular look. So, and I'll show you that once we've completed the rig. But I do prefer those. So get yourself some of those. Next we have our swivel. Uh, this is a size 4 swivel. It's rated for £60 which is perfect because we've got £60 line. Next we have our rig clip. Now I prefer this design. You can get different designs if I show you here. We've got ones like that which open like that and you slip your lead weight in and that one there already comes with a swivel but personal preference I prefer one that looks like that and it opens just like this I've, I've got a whole pot of them uh, I do recommend these ones they are nice and strong and they do hold your lead weight well these are crimps these are 10 millimeters across and 1.2 millimeters in diameter These are um, crimping pliers, and if I can show you there, so these have little um, V-notch screws in them, just like that. So what you can do is get one of your beads, place it in there, just like that. See that? And you just bear down on it and crimp it. So you put, obviously put your line through, bear down on it and crimp it. So that's our crimping tool. You've got two different um, sizes there. You've got a small and then a larger for the larger crimps. And these are from Boom's Fishing. But you can pick these crimps up, uh, these pliers up anywhere from any tackle shop or even online. So this brings us to our final um, component. And this one is the most important. This is Asso Ultraflex 70mm 60 pound line. Um, I wouldn't go any lower, especially if you're swinging a 5 ounce or a 6 ounce lead. It's basically 10%. So if you've got a 4 ounce lead, 40 pound line at least. If you've got a 6 ounce lead, 60 pound line. I think you get my drift. So this is for, designed for shock leaders and rig making. To be honest, guys, I wouldn't recommend anything else. This stuff is absolutely brilliant for rig making. It doesn't crimple, it doesn't crunch up, uh, it keeps your line nice and smooth and you'll see that as I make the rigs today. One other accessory I did forget to mention, a decent pair of sharp scissors. These are just normal household kitchen scissors. I mean you can use anything, as long as it will cut the fishing line, it will do. So my first piece of fishing line is cut at 800 millimeters. So some of you might know this knot. Um, it's called a clinch knot and it's the one I use all the time uh, for tying anything, swivels, hooks, the lot. So you feed your line, I'm doing this so you can sort of see it. Oh, difficult on camera. Feed your line through your swivel to always make sure. So say say you feed it in. Just trying to camera. Feed it in that way, right? So your line, so the, your tag end is coming downwards. Always make sure you flip it over so that your tag end is always away from you. Now enough line. Pinch your swivel in your thumb. I'm going to go round once, 
and that will form a loop just like that pinch that loop this is dead easy guys pinch that loop in your finger do the exact same again so I'm passing it underneath this one like that forming a secondary loop so what you've got there is you've got two loops yeah I think you guys can see that two loops there your tag end comes behind the two loops and it's passed through both of those loops just like that and that creates this knot a little bit of spit just like that a little bit of spit and cinch your knot down right and what this basically is is this is a slip knot right so you grab your um, longer tag end and then you just cinch it down just like that guys can't be any easier let me just get that tight and there we have it guys I think you can see that there's our loop so our tag end is um, well away because if you do a normal fishing knot your tag end's always um, sticking outwards like that and that, that's alright but I prefer doing it this way because um, you can, but if you're uh, feeding worms on, uh, especially if you've got your hook end, you can feed your worm straight onto the hook, and then straight pop it over the top of this knot, and you can pop it straight over that line, and that's, that's held your worm there nicely. Okay, so all we're going to do then, snip off our tag end. I don't like to go too close to the knot. About centimetre, centimetre and a half away from your knot. So our next process is, we've got our swivel tied to that end. Now that means we can bring it all the way down to our other tag end. And we can start adding our crimps and our beads. So feed this. Feed one crimp on, just like so. Feed one bead on. Just like so. Now you want to get a swivel, right? But we're not going to tie the swivel on this time. We're going to loop it through the swivel end, like that. And get another green bead, slide that on, and then another crimp. Just like so. So what you've got is I'd come up this end. You've got a crimp, two bead, uh, one bead, one swivel, one bead, one crimp, just like that. We're going to let this run loose just for now. All right, we're going to repeat the exact same process again because we're going to go for a two hook flapper. So you want two of these, one crimp one bead, one swivel, one bead, sorry guys, really hard to try and do this on camera and uh, try and feed it through normally, I struggle normally let alone doing it on camera, one bead and one crimp, just like so. So this is exactly what we have now, just like that. It's all free running at the minute, we haven't crimped nothing. Leave it all free running for now, and then we'll get on to the next process. Right, so we've got all of our beads on, all of our crimps on. So at this end, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna tie another swivel. Exactly the same as how we've done the other one. And I'll show you this again for the people that didn't get it beforehand. So you feed your line through the swivel with your tag end well away from you you come round leave yourself plenty of line there's no point in struggling guys especially when you're uh, tying rigs for the first time definitely give yourself plenty of line I mean I've given myself 80 uh, eight, sorry 800 millimeters give yourself a meter 
It, it really doesn't matter. If you're time rigs for the first time, make it easy on yourself. So we're going to go under our main line with our tag in. So under once, turn it over, hold. Under twice, turn it, turn it over, and hold. So you've got two loops, just like that. You get your tag end. And feed it through both of the holes. Just like that. And that's what it should look like, guys. If it looks any different than that, you've done something wrong. So just, just retry again, repeating the process that I've shown you. Bit of spit. Just like so. Cinch your knockdown. I tend to hold my swivel. Try not to wrap your line around your finger, guys, because your line will end up bunching up and it won't look very nice. So just cinch your knot down nice and tight. Can't beat that. So, just going to cut our tag end off again. Not too close. About 1 to 1.5 centimetres away. Just like that. And that's that part. Done. Right, so we've got our rig set down on our table. The next thing we've got to do is crimp our crimps. So we get our crimping tool, and what I like to do is not go too close to the um, swivel and the knot, but come just about there, I'd say another two centimetres down. So you start by your first crimp. Try and get into focus for you guys. Go get our first crimp, get our pliers side where we want it, about there, and just bear down a little pressure. You don't need to go mad with these guys, these are only small crimps. And there's our first crimp. So, what we're going to do now is slide the rest of our trace up to our other crimp hold that in there right and what I like to do with this one is is you want this fairly tight because this swivel will swivel no matter what so what I like to do is hold this line and push and pull away from me like that see that pull away from me now that's pulling nice and tight and I know that's all flush. I'm going to crimp that one there. Again, not too much pressure. That's absolutely fine. And that swivel will still swivel. No problems about that. So that's my first one. I like to do it quite close to the top of our swivel. Okay, so the next one I like to do halfway um, from our original measurement so that is 800 so we're going to be doing this one from 400 again this is not necessary guys but I'm just giving the beginners a little bit of advice and show them how to make a rig so what I, what I like to do is go from my crimp end from the middle of my swivel bring the line down to 40 and then my swivel in the middle so just like that if you can see it goes so pretty much the middle of my swivel is on 40 and that's how I like to do my rigs so we're going to crimp this one at 40 Again, pull nice and tight down to your rig, pull it away from you, and cinch it down again. So here we have our two flapper components in place. One thing I do do at this stage is add my clip. So I'm going to add that now. Just like so. 
And that's why I like these clips, because <clears throat> even if these did break, I can easily change out another one, and I haven't ruined my whole rig. Right, this part of the rig is complete now, so we can set this aside, ready to make our hook links. Once we've tied our mono onto this swivel, make sure that our hook length isn't going to interfere with our other swivel. So as you can see there, I've left plenty uh, of line out the way of that swivel. You don't want it wrapping around, getting wrapped around your other hook, and then you've just got one big mess. Okay, so we've got our 2 hook barbed. We're now going to attach this to our hook length. I'm going to feed our mono through the eye of the hook. So we're going to tie our knot again. So we're going to go leave yourself plenty. We're going to go under once, form a loop, under twice, form a loop, come round the back of it, and then through the two holes, just like so. There we go, bit of spit, just like so, put it nice and tight, and then we're going to cinch it down. There we go. And snip off our tag end. So we're going to repeat the exact same process and make a duplicate one. Right, we've got our two hook links made up. Now it's time to tie them to the main rig body. So we're going to tie it to that loop of that swivel on the top there. Exactly the same, that loop to that swivel there. One thing I did forget to mention is, is you can also do a panel rig at this stage, which I'll show you. I'll do the top one as a panel rig. So all you do, it really is simple, get another hook, feed your line through like that. And that is it, you've got your panel rig. Simple as that. So you can make panels or you can make singles. Now I'm going to leave this one as a panel rig for the top one, single for the bottom. So again, exactly the same. We're going to feed our line through our swivel. Plenty of hook length, uh, plenty of line length. Go round it once, form a loop. Round it twice, form a loop. This is definitely not the easiest thing to do. Feed it through our two holes. There we go. Bit of spit again. Just like so, and cinch down or not. Just like that. Clip our tag end off. Just like so. So there we have our main rig body with our snood of line 40, 40 400 millimeters, and our panel rig there. And I'm pretty sure you all know what a panel rig is, but basically you feed your squid on or whatever bait you want. You wrap your line around your top hook, and there you go. So just imagine that would be a bit of squid. You've got your bottom hook in the bottom bit of squid and top hook in the top bit of squid. So the exact same method for the bottom one. Grab our hook length, feed it through the eye of our swivel. Once, so you got one loop, twice, if I can get hold of it, twice, so you've got our two loops, 
and feed feed our line through the both of them just like that bit of spit again and cinch it down and there we have it guys a completed two hook flapper rig okay guys so here we have our completed rig we've got our lead weight obviously this is here just to show you so the clip goes onto the lead weight we've got our two two hook flappers and our swivel to clip onto our rod these spin fine and that is one of our most used rigs that one uh, we use it all the time all the time um, to be honest we don't really use anything else this I find catches the most fish because you've got your bottom hook and the top hook and obviously that doubles your chances of catching fish right so in terms of storing rigs um, I've only just bought these uh, these are rig wallets I've got one for that says beach and I've got one that says boat I have just started making uh, these I made a couple yesterday these have got like little poly pocket folders in them and obviously as you can see there I've got taupe rigs made up ready for the summer um, all sorts of different rigs, single hook, sliding boom rigs, um, 6 hooks, 6 offset hooks, skate rig. So I quite like these and I've, I've recently moved on to these now because I was using these before, which I, don't, don't get me wrong, I still love, which are called rig winders these are. Um, yeah, as again, I, I love using these, um, but especially if, if you're on the beach or beach fishing, these can get a bit bulky, um, especially if you've got a lot of rigs. So I've moved on to these. As I say, I think it's, it's a decent amount. I think it's about 35 different rig sleeves in it, all just poly pockets. And obviously, of course, then you can label them up like I've done there, exactly what you want to um, what, what what you want to put your rigs into. So that's just another uh, idea for you. Um, you've got two methods there to store your rigs. So we've made this two hook flapper rig um, today. The plan is we are going to make um, some more rigs but we're going to bring it out in series. So this one will be called the two hook flapper. Uh, I've got plenty of others. I've got Muppet ones, um, pulley panels. We use them quite a bit. Pulley rigs, uh, all sorts. I've got all different tote rigs, the lot, you name it. So. I'm going to bring them out eventually in stages um, rather than doing all one video and it be an hour long and you get bored. So we've made the two hook flapper rig today. I hope that was helpful um, and I hope some of you uh, will end up using this rig and maybe send us some photos of your catches if you do catch on this rig. So um, it's goodbye from us, or goodbye from me, uh, here from Real Therapy Fishing and we'll see you next time. Tight lines.